Miriam Mitchelson was an American writer and journalist. Born in 1870 in Calaveras, California, the daughter of Samuel Mitchelson and Rosalie Pchilubska. Her parents were merchants selling supplies to miners during the Gold Rush, and her brother Albert A. Mitchelson was a physicist and the first US citizen to receive the Nobel Prize. She began working as a journalist in 1895 in the San Francisco Call and San Francisco Bulletin and later the North American. She covered many topics of her day, such as the activism of prominent suffragettes like Susan B. Anthony and Charlotte Perkins Stetson. Her first novel, the 1904 In the Bishop's Carriage, was her most successful. The story of a female thief turned actor. Her other well-known work is the 1905 A Yellow Journalist. A story of a successful female journalist pretty much based on her own experiences in journalism. She died in 1942. In 1910, she published today's subject, The Awakening of Zorjas, which is why she's remembered in the field of genre fiction. The book consists of several novellas, the title being the strongest of the four. The Awakening of Zorjas has two parts. Both personal narratives written by old men decades apart from each other. The first is the story of Dr. Luigi Rossi who had spent years secretly experimenting in ways to suspend life, in order to awaken it later. His theory is that those who do not thrive in the current time may find success in another century. One day he sees Zorjas, the infamous brigand, being brought to the gaol ahead of his hanging. The angry population, much despoiled by his petty tyranny, want to stone him. The doctor finds sympathy for the rogue and aids the guards in beating back the angry mob. Later he goes to see Zorjas at the gaol, and despite finding out he was there for boiling an unfaithful lover alive in oil, slowly, he still offers him a chance to escape the gaol. By achieving seeming death after swallowing Dr. Rossi's drug, to be awakened in 100 years. He does, and he awakes in the time of Rossi's nephew Paolo, just in time to join the angry mob, murder the king, topple the monarchy, and become all-powerful military dictator of San Marco, very much in the mode of Napoleon, keeping Paolo Rossi prisoned, lest he would plot against him. There is an energy to the imagination, despite the Napoleonic model, aped almost to the letter, at least to a certain point, which makes this one very enjoyable and well-written. Of the three others, all are well-written in their own way, but only one has some genre interest. The Cradle is the story of a Norse girl bullied by her brothers till she is stolen away by the son of her father's murderer to be his wife, detailing her long way home to Trondelag amid the warring tribes of Norway. Peach Blossoms is the story of a naive, good and well-meaning female reporter who wins the heart of the man accused of murder whose case she is covering and whom she ends up marrying to smuggle him some poison into prison so he can avoid hanging. But then, well, it's well written enough to where I don't want to spoil it. Tare seems inspired by Mitchelson's origin concerning a huge strike in a mining town. A rich girl who joins a charity dedicated to bringing fresh flowers and fruit to prisons and hospitals, and niece of the mine owner, meets the man she falls for, who is the leader of the strike and editor of Pro Labour magazine. But then he ends up throwing bombs at the mine and is hanged. The ending there is very confusing and the love story seems tacked on. Indeed, she only met him twice. Mitchelson shows great imagination in the title story, and it's a shame she never wrote any more genre fiction.